and it consists of two parts okay the question is about among several factors for india's potential growth savings rate is the most effective one so they have given you the direct uh, focus of the question that is on savings rate do you agree what are the other factors available for potential growth so it is a 10 mark question so two pages are only given for this question so the focus of the question should be on savings rate and you should not explicitly write uh, yes i agree with the statement or not you should not write explicitly because uh, by writing the introduction itself uh, that should deliver that whether you are agreeing with the statement or disagreeing with the statement okay so the first part of the question should be covering the savings rate and its implications in india's potential growth and the second structure that is the second part of the question should be answered based on other factors which are available for the growth potential so your main focus should be on the question uh, that is savings rate and the second part of the question can be answered um, in one by third of the page that's enough okay so other factors so the first part of the question should be answered in terms of giving uh, a uh, valid definition to the savings rate and uh, who what are all the countries that is uh, giving uh, illustrations to the uh, countries where the uh, india uh, that is uh, potential growth have been achieved due to higher savings rate and when india has come across uh, highest saving rates so that should be the first part of the that is answer or layout for the first part of the question so we can say just give a definition based on savings rate so they are nothing but the difference between income and the consumption so we can say the savings rate uh, determines the financial state of a country as well as the growth of the economy that is it contributes towards the gdp gross domestic product of a country okay so and we know harold domer model will give you uh, the importance or significance of the savings rate in an economy and its uh, what we can say and its contribution towards economic growth okay in a economic growth of a country or a nation okay so we can say this is a vicious cycle so saving if savings rate increases investment also will increase again the savings rate will increase and it will ultimately contribute to the growth of a country that is it will pro contribute higher percentage or higher proportion to the gross domestic product of a country so we should give a brief introduction on the savings rate and the significance of the savings rate too okay so you can see here for the savings rate uh, significance uh, you can illustrate that is you can give the answer in terms of points or in a paragraph while we are writing about pros and cons or significance or measures you have to answer it in the form of points then it will give uh, give the uh, clear way of representing an answer okay so whenever we are giving definition you can write it in paragraph but in terms of measures or pros and cons or significance or role okay you have to give it in point wise then only it will uh, clearly uh, what we can say represent your ideas in the paper okay it will help the examiner too to correct the paper okay because a neat presentation is also needed to deliver our points okay so based on the significance of savings rate i have given certain examples of china and also india we can, we can say during the period that is a uh, fiscal year uh, from 2001 to 2008 for almost seven fiscal years uh, india reached uh, highest growth savings during that period due to due to the uh, contribution of savings rate in a higher proportion during those years okay so and also now we have to answer the other factors other factors which are needed for the growth potential and also you have to give some uh, what are the types of savings we can say uh, physical saving as well as the financial saving financial savings includes all the investments uh, fdi fpas anything can be included under financial saving but in terms of uh, physical saving we can say gold commodities and real estate uh, land okay so what are all the other factors for growth potential so it is a two page question okay just a 10 mark question you need not uh, explain briefly all the subheadings here so for gross capital formation infrastructure regulation research and development automation ease of doing business stability in politics you don't need to illustrate everything in a brief manner okay as it is a uh, 10 mark question this is itself enough okay so you have to divide the question into two parts first one should consist of the focus of the question on savings rate 
it should cover 2 by 3rd of the page and the second part other factor should cover just 1 by 3rd of the page so as it is a 10 mark question you don't need to uh, explain all the subheadings in a brief manner okay if possible you can uh, just write the uh, explanation in just one line if possible okay so if you think some other factors are very important like gross capital formation regulation infrastructure skill training you can or ease of doing business uh, you can substantiate your yeah, substantiate either five headings in a brief manner and all the other headings as apart from these these are all the factors which are responsible for the india's potential growth okay this is also a way of representing your answer that's all shall we move on to the second question okay the second question is about account for the failure of manufacturing sector in achieving the goal of labor intensive exports rather than capital intensive exports suggest measures for more labor intensive rather than capital intensive exports a uh, very good question um, as per as after the post covid economy we are facing this in a huge manner we can say uh, the wire or the indian express article will will, will help you uh, in reading about the post covid 19 economy especially in terms of manufacturing sector also you can refer to the yojana book i think so february edition uh, based on post covid 19 economy that will give you a clear cut idea to answer this question okay so this question has um we can say three parts because first you have to give your answer for failure of the manufacturing sector first thing so first thing is on failure of the manufacturing sector in terms of labor intensive exports okay second you can you have to mention about what are all the uh, what we can say a uh, role or significance of the labor intensive exports than uh, capital intensive exports third part should contain the measures which can be taken by the government to promote labor intensive rather than the capital intensive okay because labor intensive will involve employment okay skill training capacity building and more or less infrastructure uh, especially we can say migration and transportation will involve here okay so just to give a brief introduction in terms of manufacturing sector's contribution towards gdp because always we can say after 1991 reforms our agrarian economy jumped or shifted to the uh, service econ service sector economy that is tertiary sector uh, without what we can say without coming across or uh, shifting towards the secondary and then tertiary so we have jumped from primary to the tertiary and we lost the uh, secondary sector here so that's why till now india uh, is lagging behind the manufacturing sector as per index of industrial production uh, data has to, has uh, has suggested that industrial output has reduced by 1.9% as in the case of 2020 a uh, november month during november month because of the uh, covid impact covid 19 impact though we can say uh, when the manufacturing sector uh, is given importance and when it get boomed then we can say unemployment will not be a havoc to our country and we can bridge the gap between primary and the service sector and we can bridge all the inequalities in our country through the enhancement or improvement of manufacturing sector okay that's why the emphasis on uh, skill india or make in india or atmanirbhar bharat self reliant economy has been always in focus in our country because uh, manufacturing sector has a higher multiplier effect in employment as well as growth uh, if we rely on our own manufactured products our gdp will increase and our uh, external commercial borrowings will get reduced and we can say our fiscal deficit will also ultimately will get decreased okay so we can but in our country the powerhouse for the growth engine that is the manufacturing sector has not achieved its reasonable uh, target till now okay that's why the government has been taking all the necessary steps um, starting from 2015 we can say okay so what are the reasons for the low labor intensive exports so this is the second part of the question which should be answered because regulatory burden were there 
okay uh, where more regulatory norms were there because we have started uh, our reforms that is lpg reforms from 1991 from license raj to uh, competition commission okay so we can say we have more regulatory burden like customs duty okay are uh, not uh, that is inaccessible to it or it years so more regulatory burden were there and that is we can simply say ease of doing business infrastructure is very much less in terms of legal or legislations okay limited access to the low cost finance under developed uh, skill set of the workforce because manufacturing sector is the place where you can see the skilled and the unskilled uh, that is unskilled labors will have more contribution than the skilled ones as not uh, unlike in service sector so under developed skill set of the workforce for that and the digital and physical infrastructure is lagging in our country okay that's why government has been improving e-commerce platform and all to improve the digital infrastructure at least in our country to promote the manufacturing sector especially we can say msmes medium small and micro enterprises were there no okay so manufacturing sector has recently in the budget 2020 to 21 has proposed their near term and the long term strategies to promote their higher contribution towards gdp okay so we can say sorry wait a minute okay and we need sector specific issues to be addressed and also we have to put forth the short term challenges as well as the remedial measures to those okay and we can say what are all the sector specific and the short term challenges means liquidity is getting decreased in nbfcs especially more npas were there and consumer sentiments were very weak in our country in terms of manufacturing sector and scrappage policy is also needed to be mandated for the old vehicles because we are shifting to bs6 from bs4 no so scrappage policy should also be mandated by giving compliments to the uh, replacement of uh, old vehicles with the new vehicles okay these are all the short term challenges and sector specific issues we can say and also we have to reduce the customs duty in terms of metal industry and msme sector should uh, should have simplification and automation of gst and other regulatory norms okay that's why we can say mudra yojana and all have been uh, introduced to promote msme sectors but till now we can say the simplification and automation of gst will also uh, reduce the burden on msme sectors and what are all the measures we have to give for more labor intensive than capital intensive means indigenous research and development capability should have uh, should be introduced in our country because we have to reduce our dependency on the imported technology and on other developed economies like us okay and ease of doing business should be enhanced as i we have already told that through simplification and automation of reforms like uh, gst okay and also ease of and uh, manpower skilling should be done through pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana skill india campaign okay and uh, digital digitization digitalization of the manufacturing sector should happen through uh incentivized sustainable practices and solutions and also now we are giving more importance to the production linked incentive schemes okay in order to promote our manufacturing sector in terms of after the after the covid 19 impact in our country okay so that is the structure of the question where it should be answered in three parts first we should give the contribution of manufacturing sector as of now in india second the reasons for the uh, lower Uh, that is uh, labor intensive la labor intensive imports and what are all the measures should be given to improve the uh, labor intensive exports and the capital intensive exports okay so that question is based on ethics so this is also a very explicit question and uh, you have to think it you have to give logical reasons behind it so the right to information act is not all about citizens empowerment alone it essentially redefines the concept of accountability so rti gives the clear um, linkage between independence and accountability we can say because the, the november 2019 a judgment was given by supreme court that the chief justice office will also come under the ambit of rti because we know the all the public authority 
like a prime minister's office or president office comes under the uh, ambit of rta act 2005 um the independent or integrated judiciary was not under the uh, what we can say purview of rta so only during november 2019 the chief justice office comes under the purview of rta act 2005 so where we can say our supreme court is the sole guardian of our constitution okay and they give uh, they uh, they many oppositions were there regarding uh the purview of chief justice office under rta because section 8 has denied certain personal information uh that is personal information in terms of uh which is giving uh, uh which is beyond the secrecy of a country or uh, we can say what are all the information should not be um delivered publicly okay if they are uh if they causes any commotion in our country so those are the informations which are denied under section 8 till now that is since 2019 uh, when the cji office comes under the ambit of rti so this question should be answered in two parts first you should give a brief definition based on your opinion that is what is accountability and you have to the second part of the question should contains Uh, other than citizen empowerment so first you have to explain about citizen empowerment in terms of rti and uh, what are all the other values which enhances the accountability with respect to right to information act 2005 okay this is how this question should be answered this is a opinion based question because ethics question is always a your opinion okay maybe this question looks like a governance part but this question is purely based on your opinion whether citizens empowerment is alone uh, empowered as uh, that is given by the rta what are all the other factors also which ensures accountability with respect to rta so just to give your points in a clear cut manner like uh, first give a brief uh, definition about the accountability and the role of the rta in ensuring accountability like illustrating uh, so many developed economies are having rta okay from then only we have inspired our rta during 2005 okay because rta ensures the democracy and equality and uh, clearly explains about our rule of law that is no one is above the law and what are all the other uh, parameters or factors is also covered by rta other than citizen empowerment first explain about the citizen empowerment and give one by one the subheadings and uh, explain them briefly with some examples too okay so i have given monitoring mechanism decision making okay and intellectual democracy because more the people get aware about their surroundings about their government the intellectual democracy will have will begin okay um consequently accountability will also get ensured in a transparent manner okay so this is my opinion other than this you can also add more points based on your perspective so now we will move on to the day 30 plan this is also based on economy so explain the rationale behind the gst compensation to states act 2017 how has covid 19 impacted the gst compensation fund and created new federal issues this question should be answered in three parts even though it is a 10 mark question with a two page allocation to this question you have to answer it in three parts first just just give a brief introduction to the gst compensation to states act 2017 and second what is the rational behind the gst and the second part of the question is but is nothing but uh, uh, impact of covid 19 on the gst compensation fund okay generally and how the covid 19 impact created new federal tensions on the gst compensation fund so that the question should be answered in three parts the first part should contain giving a brief account of gst compensation to states act and rationale behind the gst compensation to states act 2017 second part of the question should have uh, should be answered with the impact of G- covid 19 on gst compensation fund the third part should con- consist of uh federal issues new federal issues arise due to the covid 19 okay so i have just given what is goods and services tax and uh, how we created a common market through one nation one tax policy 
and gst compensation giving a brief brief intro to the gst compensation because under the gst compensation to states act 2017 the states were guaranteed compensation for a period of 5 years from 2017 to 2022 by the center okay so this is to reduce their difference in their revenue okay that's why the center has made uh, or proposed this idea okay what is the rationale behind the gst compensation these question can this question can be answered very clearly uh, from the uh, what we can say summary of the gst compensation to states act okay in prs uh, if you read uh, the gst compensation to states act 2017 summary from the prs you can answer it very uh, clearly okay and in an obvious manner so what is the rationale behind the gst compensation especially first motive is to generate more revenue okay because uh, um, we have taken the decision of uh, one nation one tax in 2015 okay so that would uh, make a large difference or a, what we can say a huge gap in the revenue generation in the states that's why to generate more revenue till a period of getting adapting to the gst from 2017 to 2022 so government center has uh, proposed to this idea of gst compensation to states act and it is in pro and it is in practice till now okay so based on consumption we have made this gst compensation because we know uh, gst is not based on manufacturing is based on consumption and next Uh, delivering the idea of compensation to the states so these are all the rationale behind the gst you can also add more points based upon your opinion on reading the uh, web prs on reading from the prs website an impact of covid-19 pandemic so recently in 41st gst council meeting the union finance minister has asserted that a central will not be able to compensate the states because already we were in a um, what we can say financial stress due after the covid-19 pandemic so that's why center has uh, delivered or we can say center has clearly put forward the stand okay so gst revenue also get declined due to the covid-19 pandemic due to the strict lockdown okay during that time uh, what are all the new federal tensions arised due to the impact of covid-19 on gst compensation states were uh, giving their opinion that even during before the pandemic that is during august to september 2019 the center has delayed their compensation fund to the states uh, that was one of the uh, very what we can say priority answer given by the states even during or uh, below the lockdown the center has delayed their compensation fund so this is not only due to the covid-19 pandemic this center has done uh, even before the lockdown strict lockdown okay and several states we can say like tamil nadu punjab puducherry okay kerala have uh, uh, given raised their complaint on the center for not giving a gst compensation because already we know the state were in the states were in great uh, financial crisis because they have to spend or contribute higher percentage on the health sector okay as it is the need of the heart at that time and the finances of the states were under that is center delayed the compensation fund even before the lockdown that is also one of the reason put forward that also raised the federal tensions between the center and the states okay so what should be done by the center that should be the what is the uh, what we can say measure to be taken by the center should be your conclusion because it is just a two page question so after answering all the uh, what we can say the focus of the question like a uh, first one is about the rationale behind the gst and uh, impact of covid-19 on gst compensation and we can say the impact of the uh, covid-19 in creating or arising new federal tensions so the conclusion should be what are all the measures should be taken so uh, the center has to take a cooperative mechanism in giving gst compensation fund through monetization so or that is direct monetization like borrowing from rbi directly or borrowing from the financial markets that is the only scope for the center 
to avoid this uh, federal tensions to a greater extent okay so the next question this is a very good question women empowerment in india needs gender budgeting what are the requirements and status of gender budgeting in the indian context okay this question should be answered in two manner the first one should have should give uh, should, should be answered that is what is the significance of that is what is the stand of the woman in india and what is the significance of gender budgeting and the second part of the question should be answered with what are the requirements needed for the gender budgeting and uh, what is the status of the gender budgeting in india so this question can be answered very clearly from the uh, gender budgeting pdf which is in ministry of women and child development website okay just if you uh, search it in google in terms of uh, gender budgeting in india you will get a pdf from ministry of women and child development where you will get all the details from 2001 okay start where the gender budgeting concept has started has been initiated till now okay so that is a very authenticated source to write this answer okay as per 2011 census 48% of the india's population has been uh, occupied by women so women were behind many social indicators like health education economic opportunities everything in india so we can say through the gender budgeting the definition has been given or definition or a very clear cut explanation has been given regarding gender budgeting in that pdf okay please read that that is only the authenticated source to um, write this answer okay so it is a very powerful tool for achieving the gender mainstreaming because it will give uh, awareness about the gender importance in the country that is towards the gdp growth okay as well as uh, human development or we can say sustainable development okay so what is the rationale behind the gender budgeting resource allocation pattern will change regarding gender perspective especially to women in terms of education health um all the economic opportunities okay and it will monitor the expenditure and public service regarding women especially women perspective and we can say uh, gender differential impact will happen only after the gender budgeting in our country okay we can see the differences before the gender neutral budget and the uh, gender budgeting okay and it will ensure the gender commitments because it will uh, ensure more con more uh, contribution from the women towards the development of the country economic growth and development of the country and it will help to identify and recognize the women uh, beneficiaries in all the sectors okay uh, right from we can say from the primary sector till the service sector and it will create or contribute gender responsive elements like gender equality will be ensured human development will occur and economic efficiency can be achieved okay these are all the points which you can get only from the authenticated source of gender budgeting given in ministry of women and child development please go through that page to get a clear cut answer and uh, to have a great uh, and to have a very uh, sound idea or sound knowledge of gender budgeting so what are the because this this kind of uh, uh, what we can say gender perspective should be read because you can use it in your ethics paper as well as essay paper okay wherever the gender related questions have been asked okay and uh, requirements of the gender budgeting so what are because the second part of the question is about the requirements and third part of the question is about status of gender budgeting in india so for the requirements of gender budgeting they have given it in a uh, step by step manner but in order to conserve the words i have written it in the form of a flow chart because first analysis analysis should be done based on the census okay and assessment should be done uh, through addressing the issues and the gap which are faced by women in the country in terms of economy social and political okay so everything can be linked with the economy here while addressing the issues and gaps because financial independence is the focus for women in our country and uh, adequacy of the budget allocation whether the amount which have been allocated for gender uh perspective is adequate when comparing when compared with the previous years budget allocation okay and monitoring mechanism should be done because identifying and recognition recognizing the woman uh 
who are all the real beneficiaries uh, uh, should be done know whether they are implementing in a uh, clear that is uh, in a transparent and in a, and it is uh, reaching only the real beneficiaries uh, or the bogus beneficiaries are getting benefited okay assessment of the impact at last to enhance or improve our uh, gender budgeting in the future years okay this is the requirement of gender budgeting gb means gender budgeting and next one is about third part of the question is about status of gender budgeting in india because this is a three page question that is 12.5 marks 200 words you can lavishly use your words to write the answer lavishly use your words means a uh, technical words okay or we can say parliamentary words which are given in the authenticated source okay so not a generalistic statement or generalistic vocabulary should be used okay specific words should be used here so gender budget statement was first introduced in the indian budget 2005 to 6 okay with a common but the idea of gender budgeting has occurred in the 2001 itself in the year 2001 itself and gender neutral uh, ministries that is gender budgeting cells should be uh, introduced through the general budgeting cells uh, cells c e l l s okay i have not mentioned here gender budgeting cells gender budgeting cells will help the general neutral ministries to design new programs for women because general neutral ministries means other than ministry of women and child development all other thing are general neutral ministries only so in all the ministries gender budgeting cells should be there and they will design new prog programs especially for women either in culture or tourism or uh, health and family welfare okay or uh, transport okay and gender budgeting uh, cells will encompass four phases so step by step we have to uh, satisfy all these things like we can say Uh, knowledge uh, knowledge building and networking institutionalizing the process capacity building enhancing accountability so these are all the four sequential phases which are clearly which has to be clearly satisfied one by one to promote gender budgeting in india okay so institutioning the process only has mandated the formation of gender budgeting cells so these things has to be set up in our country and we can say in 2019 to 20 budget uh, rather than the previous year's allocation for the gender budgeting 2019 to 20 has allocated higher proportion of amount for the for the women for the gender gender budgeting in our country that's all so in future years too after the post covid 19 economy because we have already seen some um, questions based on women and covid 19 pandemic in society paper itself so taking into account of all these our country should allocate more amount to the gender that is especially women empowerment women uh, to increase their contribution in our country's economic growth for a sustainable development because um, gender equality should be ensured to be ensured of because that is also one of the Sustainable Development Goals 5 and uh, Sustainable Development Goal 16 uh, ensures reduced inequalities. That reduced inequalities will also take into account of gender. Okay. Third question. Third question is about um, society. The current, that is not society, ethics and society. Okay. The current internet uh, expansion has instilled a different set of cultural values which are often in conflict with the traditional values. Yes after the digitalization our traditional values has been diminishing and new set of values like westernization has increased a lot okay global village concept has increased a lot in our country okay like we can say so just give your opinion based on the diminishing of cultural uh, traditional values of our country and an uh, arising or emergence of new set of cultural values in our country so we now we can say materialism consumerism and uh, uh, what we can say individual representation has become more common than the communal harmony or general interest okay so these are the uh, ideas or uh, what we can say layout for this question so you have to mention all the uh, nuances which are faced by our country faced by the society due to the 
internet expansion so just to give a brief introduction about the impact of digital infrastructure in the society and the second part of the question should be that is first part of the question should be answered with how it instilled the different set of values and the second part of the question should be answered where the how it come into conflict with the traditional values that's what okay first one should be emergence of new different set of cultural values second part should show the conflict with the traditional values that's all so um, it's my opinion and it's my perspective so you write your own set of answers just i will show you that uh, new set of values means global village concept has occurred now A representation of individualism has happened has been more okay show of category we can not show of uh, show of rep our representation of self uh, or individual rather than the community or cosmopolitan nature consumerism is enhanced because uh, while we are using social media we can say um, commodities or services knowingly or unknowingly getting accumulated in our pages okay consumerism has enhanced and the people are getting rated with their products okay new set of values and next expenditure on individual has increased rather than value of savings get reduced for the representation of a individual in a digital world altruistic behavior has disrupted has reduced only during danger or we can say disaster times the altruistic behavior has been has been shown and uh, most probably the altruistic behavior is also uh, digitally or virtually represented okay and the individualism has individualism has reduced to a, a narrower narrower uh, what we can say narrower mode of thinking and the humanity has reduced only uh, during the disaster times the humanity uh, value can be seen in our in the society and not at all the times okay and the individualism has reduced the individualism the individualism has been reduced to a narrower self filled corner okay more of self interest than the general interest has has um has been shifted in our society so these are all the new set of values and where we can say it get conflict with our traditional values like cosmopolitan nature communal harmony general interest subjugation of self interest for, for the general interest so these are all where we can say the traditional values are getting conflicted with the new set of values okay so the, the at last we can say the digitalization has its own positive and negative impacts in our society so it is purely based on the priority and proposition of an individual so digital literacy and digital we have to uh, give awareness about the digital literacy in terms of ethical or we can say cultural values too okay at last we have come to the day 31 plan the day 31 plan is based on culture art and culture so the first question is about krishna deva raya the king of vijayanagar not only an accomplished scholar himself but was also a great pattern of learning and literature discuss very very straight question because uh, this question should be answered in two parts first one is about uh, contribution of krishna deva raya towards art and literature second part how he has been the pattern of literature how he has been the uh, appreciating others for the literature during his empire okay so this question can be answered from the ncert's book itself old ncert medieval india and new ncert themes too okay if you read the vijayanagara and Bo vijayanagara kingdom vijayanagara and bomani kingdom lesson you will get all the points for krishna deva raya okay the first part should consist of his how he has been an accomplished scholar so he was known as abhinava boja he was well versed in sanskrit canada and tamil sanskrit canada and tamil um he wrote many uh, drama that is play as well as his telugu work amukta malyada uh, was a great one and uh, his sanskrit work like madalasa charita is also a notable literature okay these this question need a more memory capacity for you because um this if you memorize all these points you can easily 
uh, eliminate the options or pick up the correct option uh, in the prelims especially and you can answer it in a very great manner during interview also so this question is purely based on your memory capacity so you have to revise more and more of vijayanagara and bomani kingdom especially while you are answering creating a template for your art and culture you should revise more times okay then only you can write the answer in a within 7 to 10 minutes for this kind of question because this question specifically needs all the important works okay important uh, contributions of krishna deva raya towards uh, literature so where you have to clearly write his work his contribution okay second part of the question great pattern of learning and literature where you have to give about uh, uh, his ashta jigadas everyone will know okay just if you go through the vijayanagar kingdom itself you will write about the ashta jigadas because his period was one of the golden age of telugu literature okay uh, allasani peddana i was given the title andhra kavita pitamaha and uh, also a sanskrit scholar also uh, we can say wait a minute a sanskrit scholar vaisatrita uh, who was his rajaguru okay noble minister also uh, wrote nyayamrita which was against the advaita philosophy and uh, many many works has been done by him and also he has patronized the uh, kannada poet like timanna also so these are all the things you have to memory okay memorize frequently try the answer within the short period of 7 to 10 minutes okay this question is more of your based on your memory capacity so you have to read and revise frequently from the themes to as well as old medieval india okay next question next question is a analytical or logical question okay this doesn't need uh, more of memory and all okay if you know the concept of our indian civilization you can write write it well the ancient civilization in indian subcontinent differed from those of egypt uh, mesopotamia and greece in that its culture and traditions have been preserved without a breakdown to the present day because in this question they are they are asking you to comment okay so you have to give the pros and cons as well as the measures okay it is uh, 12.5 marks means you have to write it in three pages almost so this question is about our indian civilization has not uh, break down its values even today it has been preserved but the oldest civilizations which are contemporary to our indus valley civilization or harappan indus valley civilization uh, egypt mesopotamia and greece have been diminished because they have not preserved they have not been preserved but till now the ancient indian civilization has been preserved okay and it is practiced even today in one way or the other so first part of the question should consist of the reasons why egypt mesopotamia and greece civilization has been diminished second part of the question should consist of how the oldest or the ancient civilization of india is still relevant today okay so you can see here reasons behind the egypt um, especially islamic country it has become islamic country now uh, they were opposed to the polis, poly, polytheistic beliefs many religious beliefs and uh, christianity in the past and in terms of mesopotamia which is the re- present day iraq and syria we can say um that was called the cradle of civilization okay mesopotamian civilization was called as the cradle of civilization so enriched heritage were seen those times but they also due to the presence of uh, numerous religions in the past and many practices like uh, and many practices have been followed by them and now they have become purely islamic so those have been discontinued those practices have been discontinued after a very brief period okay in greece we can say they they worship nature okay and they are and they are to uh, because they followed many practices like uh, we can say they will uh, worship supernatural elements nature and after a brief period we can say christianity and islam was pra- 
has been uh, followed by large people okay so the, these are all the reasons why their culture were not preserved and their uh, practices and traditions have been diminished but why india till now we can say our india has preserved its culture and traditions there is no breakdown in this because there till now we are having sacred groups okay and we are worshiping nature mother goddess pashupati which are all worshiped even during harappan civilization and vedic era and till now the importance of trade was there and cattle and yajnas were cattle and yajnas practice was there okay and jewelry ornaments okay games like chess and dice are even now practiced in our country okay and the diet pattern is also followed because um till now we can say the staple food has become wheat paddy okay and till now there are many institutions where vedas and upanishads uh, were taught voluntarily and interestingly among people and uh, deity worship was still relevant today like shiva brahma indra okay so ours has been preserved and continued till in this 21st century because of the continuation of the policies continuation of the principles continuations of the customs and uh, traditions since the ancient period like ibc and vedic and all okay this is due to the contribution of our people's behavior as well as the ministry or the government contribution like ministry of culture and ministry of tourism has been preserving our culture and traditions to showcase to the world okay though we have certain uh, uh, differences now but the crux or the core of our practices are still now relevant in india okay so third question this is a very direct question uh, this comes under the important contributions of philosophers and thinkers from india and the world okay very direct question discuss mahatma gandhi's concept of seven sins which you can get it from the um, mahatma gandhi's website of celebrating 150th birth anniversary okay mahatma gandhi has always been and this is given in all the uh, ethics books okay uh, like which is uh, based on upsc preparation okay while if you are get, uh, while you are reading about the important contributions of the philosophers and thinkers in india and the world you will you sh- you will read about mahatma gandhi's uh, seven sins concept okay because already we have seen john rawls concept now we are seeing about mahatma gandhi's concept of seven sins so here you cannot uh, write as though you are seven sins okay you are concept of seven sins you have to write clear cut answer for this because the seven sins of mahatma gandhi should be memorized like we have we have eight fold path of buddha and all no like that okay his seven sins concept is politics without principle business without morality wealth without work pleasure without conscience knowledge without character and science without humanity at last religion without sacrifice these are all the concept of seven sins by mahatma gandhi ji put forward by mahatma gandhi ji so each and this is a two page question so each and every uh, concept or the uh, or the uh, heading should be explained briefly with an example so i have given my perspective here for example if you see politics without principle we can say with public welfare should be the well, should be the um, pol- principle underlying for the politicians or the political party or the uh, ruling government so which can disrupt that means example corruption and bribing will disrupt that okay and religion without sacrifice if you see on uh, the super rather than superstitious beliefs or practices the motto or the vision of religion is to or we can say the basic root of religion is to promote compassion and uh, dedication to public service among the people but now we can see untouchability for example we can say untouchability black magic communal riots these are all the things where we can say uh, as a consequence of religion without sacrifice okay knowledge without character we can say terrorism okay and business without morality we can say capitalism 
wealth without work theft crime okay these are all the uh, this is how the question should be answered and you can also illustrate each and every heading with your own opinion okay without diminishing the uh, what we can say crux given by mahatma gandhi ji that's just you can illustrate the examples in your way but it should not damage or get away from the focus of the question that is of mahatma gandhi ji seven sins concept that's all very direct question so we have come to the last part of the session now so after two days we will again meet with the day 31 and day 32 plan okay till then thank you and have a good day thank you